now that will be fine. Don't worry about it. I won't even be starting to get lunch for at least an hour. But why so mysterious? What are you up to? <laughs> All right. I'll see you when you get here. Goodbye, Dave. Mom, was that Dave? Yes, it was. What did he want? Sticky Beak. He's going to be late, that's all. He's just leaving the office. Who's that for? For Gary. He's thirsty. Oh, Mike, tell Gary and Chris we won't be eating for another hour. Okay. Thanks, Mike. That's okay, Gary. <laughs> that's your fix it. I was just thinking, what was Dave being so cagey about this morning? A bit strange, wasn't he? I noticed that. Don't know. I asked him and he just said it was a secret. He said we'd see you when he got home. It's hot, isn't it? Just a bit. Uh-huh. Dave's funny, isn't he? When he gets a bee in his bonnet about something. Yeah. Should be having a tick. What's the time now? What do you think? Incredible, what is it? I just bought it for hundred dollars. Isn't that great? But Dave, you don't drive. I'm going to learn. What's wrong with you? Starting right away, it's about time I became independent. Oh, you're not. I'll give myself ten days, then I expect to be a fully qualified licensed driver. It's easy, there's nothing to it. Early morning, sleepy on, and wake up with the sun in my eyes. Another day, yesterday, I thought the rain would tumble down and blot out the skies. But still, it brought to me the Godfather's a change in my world. The Godfather's bringing me the telling me the word for such a good life. Everybody else has won. I tell my child. To three, and nothing worries me. If I could, I know I would not live naturally. I'd rather be with the Godfathers, a change in my world. The Godfathers bringing me the telling me the word for such a good life. Yes, Mike. You put one on the front and one on the back when you're learning to drive. How long do you need them for, Dave? Oh, it depends on how long you need to take to get your license. How long will you be needing them for, Dave? Ten days, maybe less. Dave, are you going to go to a driving school? Well, I was, but then I thought, why spend all that money when I live with two licensed drivers? I don't know who, but I'm going to ask Chris or Gary to teach me. Who'd be the best? Well, Chris probably, because he drives for a living. What do you think of my car, Mike? Isn't it terrific? Just think, in less than ten days, maybe a week, I'll be able to take you and Mum for drives in the country and, and do the shopping. I could even drop you off at school some mornings. Isn't that exciting? Isn't it the most beautiful little car you've ever seen? Hey, hey! Isn't it the most wonderful, fantastic little car in the whole wide world? It's a bomb. And frankly, if the Department of Road Transport declare it roadworthy, they're insane. It really is, Maria. I wouldn't drive in it. You should see under the bonnet. Dave says it's an engine. But it doesn't look like anything you've ever seen before. Well, I haven't really had a good look at it, but are you quite sure? Dead, sir. Yep. Perhaps if he spent a little money on it, the garage could fix it up for him. They just tell him it was a waste of money. Oh, poor Dave. He was so thrilled about it all. He's made up his mind, you know, to have his license within ten days. He came home with his learner's permit, his L plates and everything a little while ago. Oh, no. Has he booked into a driving school yet? Um, no. No, I don't think he has. Uh, I'm not sure what he's going to do about that. No, sorry, definitely not. I'd feel more relaxed if it was with one of you. I wouldn't feel comfortable with strangers. They'd make me nervous. Did you both learn with driving schools? It was different with me. We lived in the country. No one really taught me. I kind of picked it up, I guess. How old were you? Oh, about 12. But I didn't sit out to learn. 
Oh, it just happened. I can't even remember having a lesson. Driving was just something I knew how to do. Chris? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was pretty young, too. 16, 17. I had my first car when I was 18. I can't remember who taught me, to tell you the truth. But, Chris, you told me your father taught you, didn't you? All right, so my father taught me, but I still say the only way to learn to drive properly is to go to a proper driving school and be taught by an expert. All right, then I'll ask someone else. Oh, Dave, for heaven's sake, what do you want to learn to drive for anyway? You've got along so far without driving. It's not you, mate. Half the time it's the other bloke. Now, I'm a taxi driver. You wouldn't believe some of the things I see. Accidents happen because people are irresponsible. A lot of them are young blokes. Out to impress their mates or their girlfriends about how big they are. But a lot of accidents happen because people just haven't been taught properly. They don't know the meaning of the word courtesy. They'd run you off the road before they'd let you have what they feel is an advantage over them. I tell you this, it's a crying shame we still don't have the old-fashioned stocks. If I had my way, I'd put them up in Martin Place. And every stupid, hare-brained, irresponsible idiot who causes a road accident, I'd put there on public display. And behind him, I'd put a big blow-up photograph of his victim or victims lying dead or in hospital or whatever for everyone to see. And believe me, they deserve a whole lot worse than that. Well, I appreciate it. Look, you that. haven't got the temperament for it, Dave. You'd just be a mess of nerves. Oh, Chris, that's not fair. No, it's not, Chris. Dave would be no worse than many people, and I think better than some. I think he should have a chance, at least. Chris, how about if I had the first few lessons with you? Then I wouldn't feel so bad about taking lessons at the school. It'll give me a head start. Yeah, go on, Chris. Look, I'm sorry I sounded a bit self-righteous just then, but I, I do get so angry. I know. Chris, how about it? All right. Oh, thanks. When can we start? How about tomorrow morning before breakfast? a lot, Chris. It wasn't too bad for a first time, was it? No, no. I was a bit nervous. I guess everyone's like that in the beginning. Yeah, of course they are. Hey, the car runs pretty well, doesn't it? You know, considering. Yeah, yeah. Look, we'll talk about it later. I'll see you at breakfast. Thanks again. G'day. How was it? Well, it's a bit like sitting next to a kamikaze pilot. We ended up in the footpath twice. No. Don't tell me you didn't hear us. I oh, heard all the back firing. So did everybody else in the street. I bet it's the earliest half of them have been awake. Oh, he'll be all right. It takes a little while. And that car of his is unreal. Even if he gets his license, he can't keep it. He just can't. It needs too much doing to it. It's ready for the scratch. I'll see you. I'll see you, Chris. Is this the one? That's it, Mike. Now, there. Can you see? Ah. Here. Yes. No. There. That's it. Mm. Now, fit it round the spark plug. Can you turn it? Mm. Mm. Oh, it's a bit stiff. Oh, it's all right, Mike. Leave it. Be careful of your clothes. You should have changed them first. What's it called, man? The tube spanner. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I didn't know you knew that car. Didn't you? Oh, yes. Years ago, before I came to Australia, I used to be a driver in our women's army. Your mother has many talents. Does everyone else know? No, I don't think I talked about it. I don't like cars now. I never want to drive one again. Because of the... I don't know, Mike. Close the bonnet, will you? Now, what's wrong with it? Can it be fixed? Well, it's not going to be easy. It's a lot of rewiring. It's a job for an auto electrician. And it needs new steering knuckles. He needs a new battery. The choke cable needs replacing. The carburetor looks very loose. I noticed when Dave and Chris had it out this morning, it was smoking a lot. It's burning too much oil, which probably means new rings as well. It needs a good valve grind, and I'd say the timing was well off. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Well, don't. I just happen to know about cars. I used to drive, you know. Well, I know you did, but what did you do today? Take it apart? As much as I was able. Then Mike arrived home and he helped me a little. Beats me. Gary, what do you think? Well, I think you should start thinking about another car. Well, what's if he intends going through with it and manages to get his license? Gary, I'm glad I could talk to you before the others get home. You could help Dave tremendously, you know? How? You work in a garage. I'll ask it again. You're going to make a right-hand turn, and there's another vehicle approaching you in the opposite direction. What must you do? Uh, right-hand turn. Vehicle in opposite direction. Right-hand turn. Oh, I don't know. What is it? 
You must approach the intersection a little to the left of the centre and turn to your right, making a shallow arc inside the centre of the intersection, entering the other street as shown in the diagram. See? I think you better look at it again, Dave. You don't know it. Turn in a shallow arc? How do they expect people to learn that? How would I know how shallow an arc's got to be? That's only half the answer. There's another example. Well, let me see that, Mike. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just common sense, isn't it? They don't have to complicate it. Well, everyone has to learn by the same rules, Dave. You've got to, to get your licence. You like them in? Sure, Chris. How's it going? Will I lie, or will I tell the truth? Lousy. How do people learn all that? Oh, it comes to you. You have to be patient. But I'm booked to do a test in a week. Oh, Dave, believe me, you're not ready. Not yet. You need more time. No. What's the rush? Isn't it better to be sure of yourself before you go? But well, I've got that car sitting out there. I've paid for it. I know, and that's something else. Oh, I haven't told you. Gary's having the whole thing fixed up for me. At his garage, all for nothing. So it'll be in really good working order at the end of the week. Well, I didn't know that. That's great, Dave. But look, give yourself another couple of weeks at least. Believe me, you are just not ready. Look, Chris, I've made up my mind to do it in a certain time, and I'm determined to do it. Other people can do it, so why shouldn't I? when you're behind the wheel. You're insane. I told you to take your foot off the accelerator. I tried to, but it was stuck. My foot was stuck. Look, I'm sorry, Dave, but that's the end. Look, either you go to a driving school or you forget about the whole bit. I mean, you, you can't be allowed, mate. You're a threat to public safety. My foot was stuck. I couldn't get it Did off. you see that? You must have seen it. Chris. He almost killed us. He nearly had us through the parson's front door at one what stage. you have to cross yourself for? That's what put me off. You sitting there beside me crossing yourself. My confidence went. Your sanity went. Anyway, that's the end for me. You'll never get me in a car with you again. No, I'm sorry, Dave. But that's just the way it is. If I were you, I'd have a very heavy think about whether you take professional tuition in a dual control vehicle or whether you give up the whole idea of driving at all. Now, I mean it, Dave. Either do it properly or forget it. out of that office quick enough. You know, I'm fed up with being a career lady. Oh, how are you, Mary? I'm fine. Would you like a drink? Uh, do you think I should? A weak one. <laughs> Why not? Are you having one? Why not? Did you see Dave anywhere up the road? No. What's he doing home so early? He had his first lesson with the driving school. They could only take him at 4.30 today, so he came home early. He must be determined. He is. I only hope he's all right. Oh, of course he is. What on earth can go wrong in a dual control car with an instructor beside you? Oh, stop looking so heavy. I'm drinking ginger ale. I'm not. Well, you shouldn't drink when you're pregnant. Oh, there's that much brandy in it. And after the day I had, I regarded it as purely medicinal. I needed it. <laughs> Gary's a wonderful advert for milk drinkers all over the country. There's nothing wrong with that. I like milk. And I approve very much. Did you manage to get much done this afternoon? What? Oh, you mean Dave's car? My bit. We're pretty busy. What's it like? One step from being vintage, but not really in as good condition. No. A fool. He's a fool. How he ever got his license beats me. Dave, that you? That's drama. Instructor. That's a joke, that is. The first sign of anything going wrong, what's he do? He faints. He what? We were driving along. Well, I was. Perfectly happy. Calm and relaxed. 
when somehow or other I edged over onto the wrong side of the road. Only a few feet. I wasn't watching because he was talking to me. I look up and there was this truck. I looked to him for some help and he fainted. You're kidding. He fainted dead away. We were both lucky I had a cool enough head and good enough reflexes to get us out of it. It was very sticky, I can tell you. Sounds it. How far over on the wrong side were you? Oh, I don't know. One, two, or five feet. Hey, five feet! In other words, you were driving on the wrong side of the road. Well, maybe I was. But he's supposed to be there to instruct me and to watch me. That's what he gets paid for, not to pass out on me. The other man's a chicken. How can you expect to learn from a nervous wreck? Well, he is now, anyway. Dave, what happened then? Did you did you crash or anything? No, I managed to swerve the car and crash through the Papadopoulos' front fence. Oh, the Papadopoulos' front fence? Yeah, I wish it had been someone else's. Oh, I do too. Well, no one was hurt. Oh, that's something. Insurance will cover us. What are you going to do then? Well, I'm going to arrange for another driving school. I'm phoning one tonight. If I'm going to have that test next week, I can't afford to lose a minute. What? Mike, what on earth have you been doing? Mike! It looks as though he's had a fight. Then Mr. Papadopoulos said something awful in Greek. Swearing, I think. I'm glad I don't talk it. I am too. Well, I didn't know that David crashed down Mr. Papadopoulos' fence. Kevin and I were down at the park playing. And when we got back to his place, we found that Dave and the other man had driven off. Mr. Papadopoulos started saying mean things about Dave. So I told him not to. And then Kevin pushed me, so I pushed him back. And then he belted me in the eye. So now Kevin and I aren't friends anymore. And it's all because of Dave pushing down Mr. Papadopoulos' fence. You see, they're Greek. They don't understand us. Mike, don't talk nonsense. Doesn't matter what nationality people are. What do you think I am? What do you think you are? We're Hungarian. So, doesn't make us any better than the Papadopoulos's. Don't let me hear you talk like that. Oh, he'll be all right. It's not a bad cut. I'll get a wet cloth. Why does Dave have to learn to drive anyway? Not everyone was meant to have a car. If there were, buses and trains would go broke. Never mind about that. What Dave wishes to do is entirely his own business. He's a little upset right now as well, so I wouldn't say anything to him. All right. Never mind, mate. It'll look different in the morning. I hope it will. You should see their fence. It was burnt before, too. All painted in purple and green. <laughs> It'll be right. Yes, it will. Now, no more. Go into the bathroom and let Elizabeth fix your face. Before making any U-turn, wait until the roadway is clear and see that in turning, come in, you do not interfere with the free flow of traffic. Here. Oh, what is it? Coffee. I thought it might help clear your head. Oh, thanks. Want me to hear? Oh, I don't know it really well enough yet, but thanks. I hear Gary's got your car down the garage. Yeah, he's tuning it up for me, for free. I think that's all it needed, a bit of a tune-up. Oh, I got onto another driving school. Oh, which one? Bells. Oh, well, they're one of the best. You can't go wrong with them. When's your first lesson? First thing in the morning. Good luck. Thanks, Chris. Neutral, start, Get clutch in, into first, accelerator, handbrake off, let clutch up slowly, let clutch up slowly. Was that Dave? Yes. Mark, I wish you'd put your gown on. What's he like? Well, he looks capable enough. Let's hope he's patient, as long as this one doesn't fade on him. other driving schools are there? David Milson. Oh, hi, Liz. <laughs> no, that's okay. What can I do for you? You what? I said I'm going to teach you to drive. Look, I'll pick you up outside your office at 5.30 in my car for your first lesson. <laughs> Liz, look, I appreciate the offer. I, I do, really, but I can't let you do that. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking of giving up the whole idea. You will not. You see it. Through 5.30. Oh, I don't know what sort of teacher I'll make, but uh, we'll soon find out. Oh, no, Liz, I can't. Not with you and your condition. I'm not, I'm not safe to be with. 
Everyone says so. Never mind what everyone says. Outside at 5.30. And look, if I hear one more reference to my condition, I'll scream. David Milson, don't argue. I'll be waiting for you. I'll see you in a sec, Liz. I'll just get rid of my coat. Okay. Hi. Hi, Liz. Well? Oh, if anyone says anything snide to me again about women drivers, well, they'd better watch out. He was all right. I'm still shaking like a leaf, but he'll be fine. Mind you, I think he was more worried about having me in the car with him than anything else. He didn't have time to be nervous. But with a little more confidence, he'll have no trouble at all. Oh, that's marvellous. I'm taking him every day for the next four days after work. Is with you sure it's not too much? Maria, you promised. I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> However, did you do it? Oh, I was terribly helpless. It made him feel very responsible. He wasn't dependent on me. I made him feel that I was dependent on him. Simple, really. <laughs> How close can you park to another vehicle? Within four feet. A post box? Um, six feet? Uh, ten. Ten feet. Right. You know, nothing else to ask. All you've got to remember now is giving way to the right. Now, Liz tells me you're great on hill starts. How's your reverse parking? Oh, I think it's good. Feel more relaxed? Oh, beaut, Gary. Oh, my hands are sweating. I'll slip off the wheel. They will not. The bloke will expect you to be nervous. People are always nervous when they go for their license. That should do it. <laughs> Thanks. You're right. Good luck, Dave. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Oh, thanks, Mike. I brought you a cup of tea. Oh, thanks. G'day, Liz. You just arrived. Couldn't miss the great day. Don't forget your car at the front waiting. All tuned up, new parts, everything. I know. I appreciate everything, honestly. I just hope now I don't let everyone down. You'll be terrific. Oh, yes, I will. Yes, you will. I'll tell you this. If he gets it, I'll never say another word about women drivers. You <laughs> see, you can't fail. <laughs> Did you speak to him? Did you say anything? Not yet, but he's smiling and he looks happy. He got it! Mike, run out the back and tell the others quickly. Run! Oh. Hurry! Hurry! Gary! Well, it's taught me a lesson. Nothing is impossible, nothing. Oh, Chris, you'd never believe how nervous I was. I didn't think I had a hope. Join the club. I know, but suddenly everything seemed to click. I wasn't scared anymore. I knew I could do it. Well, mate, I've got to confess it was more than I knew. Actually, I've learned a few things. That determination conquers all, as they say. I discovered that Maria is a better mechanic than most blokes I know. Yeah, what about that? And that Liz has hidden talents. <laughs> you know, I'm not taking anything away from her, but it was those first few lessons I had that made the difference. <laughs> I just wish I hadn't got so uptight and fouled things all up in the beginning like that. Those guys from the driving school are terrific, really. It wasn't until I got with Liz that I'd realised how much I'd already learned. But she taught me a heck of a lot. Well, mate, I told you, didn't I? You've got to go about it the right way from the word go. It's the only way. You do realise this is a large vote of confidence you're getting from us all today. You'll be in very good hands. Just don't be a Sunday driver. Come on! How about we drive by the Papadopoulos' and see if he can knock his new feds down? Move. <laughs> just tell everyone their chauffeur's on his way. Another day, yesterday, I thought the rain would tumble down and blot out the sky. 